of our friends playing along at home, maybe still on a spring break trip or whatever. Um, here's what our week looks like. I'm not really sure what's happening on Friday. Um, I will, though. I think we have math class on one of these days after you take the test. I'll probably show you a sweet YouTube video or like a TED Talk or a, I've got a documentary that I normally like to show, but it's a little bit longer. Um, so I don't know if we'll get into that yet or not. But yeah, OST review today, tomorrow. So in foundations today, you're going to be asked to do the OST practice test, which when you go to the ODE website, you'll hit like the practice site. And I, I think they have the link on somebody's Schoology or on the foundation Schoology. Um, we'll be running an actual practice session, but I want to let you guys see like kind of behind the um, start a new session now. When we go in and select to have you guys do the practice test, it is selecting from all of these materials from the previous years. So what I gave you right now, what you have in front of you is this stuff, the spring 2021, so last year, what was on the math seven test. So that is what we're going to look at today is what was on that math seven test last year. So some of your questions don't necessarily have the answer things here, but go ahead and read through this first problem on your paper and you can read it on your paper up on the screen. And then look at those dots. I don't know, man. That was so long ago. Uh, Roman skit? No, that was old. I don't know. Yeah, we did the canteen. I think we just did more like angles or circles stuff. I forget exactly what we did in math class. I could go check the YouTube video. I bet it's there. Yeah, we were getting ready for break. All right, but that doesn't matter because now we're talking about this. Anyone want to take a risk and tell me what they think about the change in this data? Make sure that you read the names of the graphs. So what's the graph on the left side different than the one on the right side? Aiden? Before and after. Before and after? Um, lap. Training. training, right? Yeah, they're training. So it's lap before training and after training. So what do you notice about the cluster of data points here? Like what's the lowest, what's the highest? It's like 48 to 61, right? So it's, or yeah, because it's counting by twos, right? So let's, if you don't have a highlighter, go grab one. You can take the entire cup up front. It looks like only one group hasn't done it yet. Well, let's like go ahead and, and on the test, there are highlighter tools also, some kind of, kind of box my things out at the bottom and the top. But then over here, 38 up to 52. Well, guys, if you're trying to do like a competitive sport, do you want your time to be more or less? You want your time to be less, right? You want a lower time because that means you're faster. So then the options that we get here in this answer part, a blank overlap, well, do they have a small overlap or a large overlap? What values overlap here? Yeah, if we kind of zoom down in on it, I've got 48 to 52 here, and my 48, my minimum from my other set is right here, right? This is where the minimum from the lower set was. So this is our overlap. Do you think that's a small amount of overlap or a big amount? Small, right? The only overlap would be between 48 and 52. This is pretty small. So we would probably say a small overlap between the distributions indicates that after one month of training, what happened with the time it took the students? Did it increase or decrease? Decrease. I think there was a pretty substantial change, right? I mean, you shaved seconds off your time. So we would probably say a significant decrease because like all of these points, all seven of these are lower than the original data. 
All seven of those are lower. So it doesn't make sense why we would answer this with something like there's a small overlap, which means the training did help, right? The training took our times and moved them all down, made us faster. Does that make sense? Go ahead and read the next one. What is the product? Read that on your own, see if you can figure it out without any help from me. Remember, you guys are welcome to pass. I'm going to shuffle up and then probably put a post-it and start our deal again. Marina, what does product ask us to do? Yeah, so when they ask us product, we are multiplying our two numbers. Guys, what's a negative times a negative? A positive. So on our paper, because guys, we can make notes on here. On our paper, let's make sure that we kind of like write out positive or like POS or put like a positive symbol. And then what's one times eight? One times eight. Well, one. Yeah, one doesn't change things. Positive eight. Any questions there? Product means multiply. What word means add them? What word means add them? Sum. Right, S-U-M. Sum would be to add them. All right, if we look at the next question, two students are randomly selected from a group of three students. Kim, Pat, and Sue. Which set down here represents the sample space for selecting the two students? So what is sample space? This is stuff we just talked about a couple weeks ago. We haven't done a lot with it. Antonella? So when we talked about this, we talked about Phoenix as our population. And we said you guys might be our sample space. Might be who... Vincent? Yeah, like who you can pick from, right? So we do this every day for lunch. The sample space is the options you have for lunch. The people that are chosen in that situation would be the food you pick, right? Whether you chose pizza or chicken or whatever. So our sample space for picking like out of those three people is those three people, right? Kim, Pat, and Sue are a sample space that we can choose from. Um, Kim, Pat, Kim, Sue, Pat, Sue. Does D do something extra? Kim Pat, Kim Sue, Pat Sue. Sue and Kim already happened, right? So these are all the different two groups that you could make. There are three different groups. Yeah, because two, two, and two. Right? This is like A, B, A, C, B, C. Right? Matching up three different people. Excuse me, could I please have Max carry me into the office for a moment? Max, please come to the Perry office for a moment. Thank you. So I might double check on this one. I believe it's A, the options that you could get, the different groups that you might pick are C. We'll circle back to this one tomorrow. I'll put a little question mark next to it. This is my first time going over this because this just got released this year. <clears throat> so the population, remember, is everybody. Population is the whole, whatever the big group you're going to talk about is. So the sample space is the smaller group. Yeah, that was the only one that I was iffy on. We maybe should have just skipped it for today, but, you know, I'm still learning. Uh, check out number four on your own. See if you can figure out how you would solve this. I don't necessarily want to talk you through it because I think you can do this one. I would highlight the important stuff. So when it asks... You know, like in gallons per minute, 
I feel like that's pretty important. Gallons per minute. Anyone feeling like they want to help me on this? And guys, one day of the test will be without a calculator, but if you are allowed to use a calculator, there will be one up here in the options. So this one is not a calculator question. This is one that we're expected to be able to do on our own without a calculator. They gave us a fourth of a minute. They ask us for gallons per minute. John, how many minutes does the, the answer want us to talk about? For gallons per minute? So go ahead, like, if you're taking that route, explain it to us. You're right with what you're saying, but you need to explain it to people. <laughs> you do. I think you just tripped up on your words. So John is looking at a minute. So one minute is 60 seconds. If they give us a fourth of a minute, you can think of it like how many seconds? How many seconds would be in a fourth of a minute? 15, right? So John could go from 15 seconds to 60 seconds, but I honestly think it's a bit easier to just try to go from a fourth of a minute to how much of a minute? A, minute. a whole thing. So to go to one minute, how do I go from one fourth to one? Times four. Times four. So the amount of water is going to have to have a times four happen. So guys, this is exactly like, you should have graph paper out. If you don't, I, I, I'm confused. If we set up three eighths of a gallon over one fourth of a minute, and we said that's proportional, that will do, we did this problem with a pool. Like really recently we talked about filling up a pool and when it was like one fourth of the way full. So if I try to go from one fourth of a minute to one whole minute, that is a times four. Now be careful when we do this multiplication. We're only gonna multiply the numerator we keep that 8 in the denominator. So what's 3 times 4? 12. So we get 12 eighths. Can 12 eighths be reduced? Yeah, Lucas? Yeah, that's 1 and a half. Right, so that is really 1 and a half gallons per minute because it's gallons over one minute, so gallons per minute. Guys, I am trying my darndest to make sure that you feel comfortable going into the test tomorrow. So if you have questions, please ask them. We had a fourth of a minute. We wanted one whole minute, so we got to multiply by four. Questions? Go ahead and check out the next one on your paper there, a six-sided number cube. Oh, I go out of order. We're gonna do the number cube one first though because it is next on your paper. We're gonna go in order of your paper. It's really the easiest way for me to say that. Mia, what is our general chance of rolling a five? One out of six. So guys, you might want to make the note on your paper real quick, just to remind yourself, if you can't think of that on your own, the probability of getting a five, Mia just correctly told us, is one out of six. But how many times do they do this here? They do it. 50 times. 
So how could we kind of make a guess for how many times? And I see some people reaching for calculators. Um, yeah, this one doesn't really, I don't think this one allows us calculator. John? Now be careful. We can multiply the 50 times the 1, but we don't want to do it on the bottom, because watch. So, if we do it 50 times, we'll have 50 divided by 6. We're doing a sixth of 50. So what we're really doing is a sixth of the 50. So that's like 50 divided by 6. Right, a sixth of your rolls. So I, I got some faces, like you're making sour faces, like this doesn't make sense. So listen, give me your eyes. This die, the chance of rolling a five is one out of six, meaning if I roll the die six times, one of them should be a five. If I roll this 50 times, one out of every six rolls should be a five. So we're going to take 50 and divide by six. Well, guys, you don't have to be perfect here. Let's be approximate. What number, let's just change our number for 50. What number would divide by six nicely that is less than 50? 48, 48 right? 48 is a nice number to divide by six. So if we did 48 divided by six, What's that get us? Crap. So this is going to be approximately 8, a little bit more, right? A little bit more than 8, because 48 divided by 6 is nice. And look at the directions they give you. What is a good prediction for the number of times? Would we want to give an answer in decimal form? No, it's, a prediction. it's a prediction of how many times. I can't do something half a time, either happens or it doesn't. So would we say eight or would we say nine? Eight. We would be closer to eight, right? This would be like, um, I think one of you said it's like eight and a third. It's actually eight and one third. But so that's closer to eight. So we would say eight here. Does that make sense? Saying so a chance of a five happening is one sixth. Now, how they might change a problem like this for this year is instead of saying like a five, they might say like an even number. What's your chance of rolling an even number? Three six. Three six or half, right? So if we were doing this half for like even numbers, what's half of 50? 25. 25. So we would expect out of 50 rolls, 25 would come out even. Questions? Look at the... Look at the angle problem on your paper. That is why John is asking me. Crap, I lost it. I put some of these out of order to fit on the paper nicer. Ah, oh, whatever, it's here somewhere. All right, there we go, it's all the way. This was question 20. How many degrees does a straight line have? 180. So we're going to take 180, subtract away. They do give us a calculator here. So we could do 180, take away that 43, and 92.7, right? So we want to put those angles together. These are the two angles they gave us. And you could just write this down on your paper if you want. Those are the two angles they gave us. We need to subtract both of those away. It should be 44.3. And there we would not want to round because they're using decimal numbers for this angle size. Yeah, it is similar to like a triangle. All right, cool. Let's flip to the, <clears throat> by the way, guys, any problems that you don't answer will be marked with like little caution triangle things. You can always go back to these questions. 
This one's kind of weird, so I want you to take a moment, read it, and think about it on your own. So you gotta imagine that you have a lightsaber. So if we take a pyramid and we start slicing it with a lightsaber and they say parallel, we're gonna talk parallel first with the bottom, the base. If I slice across this pyramid, what sort of shape am I gonna get at that cut? Like where my lightsaber sliced through what shape would I then see? Pentagon. A smaller pentagon, right? But if I slice through the middle of this shape, so imagine we're going through the middle here, and you can actually kind of see it where it's like rubbed. I don't know why it's rubbed, but there's kind of some dust in there. You can sort of see that line across the middle. That would so be a pentagon. Any questions about that slice being the same shape as the bottom? And you can see the pentagon. Pentagon gets smaller as it goes up. This is the weird part. What if I go vertical, like perpendicular to the bottom? What if I slice vertically? If I go right through the peak, I could get a triangle, right? Like down two sides and across the bottom. However, what if you don't slice it through the peak? What if we slice it like here? That is a trapezoid. This is one of the weirdest things that I have to try to communicate to seventh graders. And this is why I wish I could just bring my saws in, right? Give me a pyramid, put it on the saw, just cut, like literally just cut off a side of it and you could open it and see, oh, hey, look, there's a trapezoid if I cut down this side. Because imagine with me, you know, I really would have a colored piece of paper, just one for it. If I cut through the side, like look through the clear part and see the ruler, but then if I turned it this way, it'd get wider at the bottom, right? Like that cut is narrower at the top, wider at the bottom. That's a trapezoid. If I draw this on the front face, so I cut through right here. I follow down, come across and follow down, that more looks like a trapezoid, right? Flat top, flat bottom, angled sides, trapezoid. So pentagon would be across, triangle would be straight through the top, trapezoid would be straight down, not through the top. Right, so like here, this gets us a trapezoid if we don't hit the top. No, I mean the middle. The... You mean diagonal? No, the Like through yeah. here, down to here? No, like right in the middle. Yeah, the, the, the bottom, like the base, right? it's not. So the shape that we cut, if I went through the top of here, would be a triangle that would look similar to this triangle. It'd look really close. It'd be a tiny bit bigger, actually. Um, or no, a tiny bit smaller. Sorry, but if we cut straight through the bottom, we'd come straight across, and it would have two points at somewhere. Like, maybe these, if we make the biggest triangle possible. And then you'd ride down this front fold and down the back side. But whether we're on a fold or a face doesn't matter. It'll trace out a triangle. So I don't know if this will help at all. If I went down that back dotted line, that fold, up to the front, which now this is really hard to see, and right here, that's a triangle, but it's really hard to see because we're on a flat screen, right? It's not three dimensions. 3D shapes are weird, so just think about lightsabers. Or some people teach it like if you if this was butter, anyone like eat butter yesterday at Easter dinner or whatever? If this was butter and you took a hot knife, like a lightsaber, if you took a hot knife, cut your butter, what would you see at that cut? I know, you all are like, why is he talking about butter? 
I mean, I would probably rather that be a pyramid of cheese, because I love cheese. All right, um, proportional relationship. We know this because two things, and you should write these down right now. What are the two things that makes us know that this is proportional? I mean, it tells us, but what two things do we see on the graph? It starts at zero. Zero, zero. So let's write that down first. We see our zero, zero point. And what else? It's a straight line. So guys, the constant of proportionality is a fancy way to ask how y relates to x. It's a fancy way to ask how y relates to x. So if we look right here, y is 2 when x is what? 1. The constant of proportionality is the y when x is 1. So the constant of proportionality is the y when x is 1. So here, that value is 2. Because y is 2 when x is 1. y is 2 when x is 1. Hmm? Now, if I even look at a different point, like let's say this point up here, y is 8 and x is 4, the other way that we can do this is take the y and divide it by your x, and that will equal your constant of proportionality also. Because what is 8 divided by 4? It's 2, right? 8 divided by 4 is 2. So our constant of proportionality here is 2. Questions. Go ahead and read the next one on your own about candy. We'll move away from butter and talk about candy for a minute. What colors of candy do we have? Red, blue, green, yellow. Guys, I can see that some of you are not even looking at the right page because I can see that your hole punches. Um, ah, never mind. Your guys' are flipped for mine. Please make sure that you're reading this and you're not like waiting for somebody to do it for you. So if you hadn't already read blue, red, green, and yellow, read that now and then let's go ahead and highlight that. Blue, red, green, yellow. What else is important in this setup? Yeah, equal number of each color. Same size, so we can't tell them apart. If I just reach into the bag, they all feel the same. And we have to check one of these boxes for each of the different candies. So what is your chance of selecting red or yellow? Red or yellow. Well, red and yellow are two of the how many flavors? Four. four. So if these are two out of four, what's two out of four? Half. This would be a one half chance because the two colors out of four. So guys, you can make a little note if you want of like two out of four. Read that next one on your own. What about selecting blue, red, green, or yellow? Are there any colors that we left out? Blue, red, green, yellow, blue, 
red, green, yellow. So I got all of the colors here. What's your chance of picking one of the colors in the bag? One, it's 100%. Guys, this, because they say or, right? We don't care what color. They're like, I'll be happy with blue or red or green or yellow. It's a trap door. It's a trick. It's there to mess with you. Seriously, I am sorry. I don't make these tests. It's there to mess with you. We'll get to another problem where I just think it's mean. They make you convert for no reason. And I was complaining. Some of you heard me this morning. I was complaining to Mr. Shoop out in the library. I'm like, this is just rude. But that's why I'm trying to prep you. I'm trying to prepare you for these traps. What's the chance of a yellow? Or yellow. Purple. Sorry. Purple. There are no purple. So that's zero. You can't say unless, right? There's no, there's no saying unless. This is the test we've been given. Which expression is equivalent to negative seven? I want you to try this on your own for a moment. Which, does it say that it could be multiple? No, it says which. Which one? Right, which expression? You would not have a calculator for this. If I have $2 and give away $5, do I now have negative 7? Nope. No, because I started positive. If I start at negative 2 and minus 5, am I at negative 7? Yeah. Yes, because I started at negative and went down further. Right, so guys, A would actually be negative 3. B is negative 7. C, what's minus a, po uh, minus a negative do? This becomes actually plus positive, so this is actually positive 7. Ooh, this is also plus positive, so this is negative 2 plus 5. Which, yeah, that gets 3, so it is B. Trying to check, can you sum to make that bigger negative number? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rule breaker, you know. I'm gonna stick it to the man. All right, we just really got into this stuff in the past couple weeks with the triangles. If one side is four inches, another side is seven inches, right? So this is like when we were talking with this guy. If one of these is four, and one of them is seven, right? Would three, because four, seven, would three make a triangle? No. Three would not make a triangle because we have to lift it up. So what length could I have if this is seven and this is four? Well, guys, one good default. Ask yourself, can I use the four or the seven? Well, if this is four and this other one is four, would four and four be bigger than seven? Yeah, which is what we want. We want these two short sides to be bigger than the long side. So if this is four and this is four, they can connect. They will make a triangle, right? So four, four, and seven. Or could I use seven? Well, if I make this the same length as, could I do seven, seven, and four what sort of triangle has seven, seven, like two equal sides and a small bottom? Not right. Isosceles. You're right. It would be acute in this case. But remember, if your two legs are equal length, your bottom one, guys, imagine this, could be like really small or bigger. Seven and four. What's the longest? Well, if I open this up, What's seven plus four? 11, would 11 make a triangle? No, cause it's flat. So would 10 make a triangle? Yes, 10 could work. So guys remember it's between. So what I want you to write here is like three doesn't work. 11 doesn't work. So it's between three and 11 
Or you could do like 4 and 10 to be safe. It's like between 4 and 10. If I can spell. It's really the side needs to be bigger than 3 and smaller than 11. Needs to be bigger than 3, smaller than 11. Mm -hmm. So this is the one that we're going to, like, we got a couple more minutes, but this will be our last one for today. I want you to start talking with this or about this with each other. Guys, this is not really your homework. We're going to do it more tomorrow. But if you have homework from before break that you haven't done, that is your homework. Okay, stuff from before break. If it's still not done, let's get it done. How could I find the volume here? How do we find volume here? How would you find volume of a box? Here's why this problem's mean. One cubic meter is equivalent to a thousand liters. Guys, if you set up this multiplication, 0.3 times 1.1 times 0.4, you'll get point, like 0.132. And this question is multiple choice. That isn't one of your answers. Because we have to convert. This is meters cubed. But every meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters. So we take this 1,000 and we multiply by that. So we do times a thousand because that's our conversion factor. Times... 1,000, and that bumps our decimal over three places, giving us 132. And now we are out of time for today. Uh, we probably won't turn it in. I mean, if I can trust you guys to do it while we're doing it in class, which I don't know why you wouldn't. Like, I don't know that I'm going to collect it. Oh, the other homework joke worksheet things? I wasn't here on Friday. We were supposed to turn this in now. Yeah, that's due. The joke worksheet things, like, I haven't really collected those, but all the other, like, normal worksheets, we did collect those. <clears throat> Alright, thanks guys. Have a wonderful day.